there are some coincidences in life that we just can't explain. And many of you have left your own stories in the comments about your amazing synchronicity experiences. If you're new to the channel, you might be wondering, what exactly is synchronicity? The psychologist Carl Jung described it as a meaningful coincidence that happens when an event in the outside world lines up with an inner state of the mind. They're not connected by cause and effect, they're connected by meaning. There's a good example of synchronicity in the movie I Origins. It's the story of a man named Ian Gray. He's a PhD student researching the biology of the eye. One day, at a Halloween party, he meets a mysterious woman wearing a mask. Her face is covered, but he's drawn to her green eyes. They have a connection. But then, without any explanation, she leaves very suddenly. He doesn't even learn her name. He goes home feeling completely alone, figuring that he'll never see her again. We learn that Ian is an atheist. He doesn't believe in destiny or fate, or that our lives might be guided in any kind of divine way. And yet one day, he walks into a store to buy a lottery ticket and some smokes. Oddly, it costs exactly $11.11. He takes some money from his pocket. It's exactly the amount of money he has, 11.11. He walks outside and looks at the time. Again, it's 11.11. He catches a bus. It's the number 11, Broadway. And it's here that things take a strange turn when a dog starts barking at him. This bothers Ian so much that he decides to get off at an earlier stop than he normally would. And then instantly, he sees it. A literal sign with the same eyes he saw at the Halloween party. The mysterious woman he can't stop thinking about. He decides to research the eyes from the billboard. Could it really be her? All of it puts him on a journey that would change the course of the rest of his life. But what struck me most about this scene is that even when Ian sees all of these amazing synchronicities lining up in a row, he tries to dismiss it as a coincidence, and yet he can't ignore it completely. Why? Jung says that the thing that defines synchronicity is the sense of the numinous. It's a powerful feeling of wonder and awe that lifts us outside of ourselves, taking us outside of the everyday routine of our lives and connecting us with the divine. So let's get into your stories. The first one comes from a viewer named Curlew, all the way from England, who writes that, A few years ago, my brother went into a secondhand bookshop looking for a cookbook for our mother's birthday. He wandered for a while and found himself drawn to one of the books. He picked it up and inside the front cover was a page signed and dated by our mother. It was the same book she used when she was a student at a catering college about 40 years earlier. We gave her the book for her birthday and she was absolutely surprised to see it again. I love this story because a lot of us can relate to that feeling of having something you thought you lost, finding its way back to you again, and being suddenly reminded of a special time in your life many years later. And this story does that in a really magical way. And it reminds me of a similar thing that happened to the actor Anthony Hopkins, one of the most respected, accomplished, and kind of terrifying actors we've ever seen. But in the early 1970s, Hopkins starred in a movie called The Girl from Petrovka, which is based on a book by George Pfeiffer of the same name. After he signed on to do the movie, Hopkins went to London to look for a copy of the book. He went all over the city, visiting many different bookshops, but he couldn't find it anywhere. Finally, he decided to give up and go home. He went to Leicester Square Underground Station to wait for the next train. But suddenly, his eye was drawn to a book he saw sitting on a nearby bench that had been left behind. He picked it up and was absolutely stunned to find that it was exactly the book he was looking for. But as he flipped through it, he noticed that someone had written on many of the pages. Later, Hopkins had a chance to meet George Pfeiffer, the author of the book. He told them about his remarkable story. Pfeiffer said, you know, I actually had a personal copy of the book myself, and I wrote some very important notes on the margins of the pages but it got lost and I never saw it again. Hopkins handed him the book that he found at the train station and asked, is this your book? Unbelievably it was. It was Pfeiffer's original copy, complete with the same notes he'd written in the margins all those years ago. What are the odds of that? Imagine losing a book that was important to you, having it show up in a train station in one of the biggest cities in the world where it's found by an actor who just so happens to be starring in the movie version of the very same book you wrote. And as incredible as it is, the only reason it happened is because Hopkins had the presence of mind to pay attention and to be open to the signs. Otherwise, it easily would have been missed. 
One of the major lessons that I draw from this is that it's so important to take the time to be mindful, to be present, and to live in the moment as much as we can. Our next story comes from a viewer named JC, who also went to a bookstore. JC was drawn to two books and picked them up. One book was The 5 AM Club on self-development and waking up early. The other book was about the Spartans of ancient Greece. JC wasn't sure about buying either of them. While flipping through the 5 AM book, it opened to a random page, and there it was, a reference to the Spartans. This is a great story, and for a lot of people who do book research, many of them describe very similar experiences. The author Arthur Kessler calls this type of synchronicity the library angel, which happens when just the right book or exactly the right reference comes to you at precisely the right time. The British author Dame Rebecca West tells a story of trying to go through a huge number of books and documents about the Nuremberg trials. She found hundreds of volumes of material, but the worst thing about it was that none of the information was organized or indexed in any way which meant that it could take months for her to find what she was looking for. After hours of mindlessly flipping through the pages, she turned to one of the librarians and said, I'm never gonna find it. It could be in any one of these. She pulled a random volume from the shelf, opened the book, and there it was, the page with exactly the information she needed. And she's not alone. The author Graham Hancock describes his experience with it like this. As, as a researcher, there have been a number of occasions where exactly the right book or exactly the right piece of research has come into my hands at exactly the right moment when I needed it in order to make progress. Way back in 1989, um, I was in the ha house of a friend. Uh, he was aware of some of my interests and he thrust into my hands a book and it was called Hamlet's Mill. Had that book not been given to me at that time, I would never have gone on to write Fingerprints of the Gods. And yet it seemed to come to me purely by happen, happen chance. I think the term library angels uh, is a good one for, for this kind of experience. It seems like some higher force is looking after us in some way and, and, and ensuring that from time to time we get exactly the information we need at exactly the moment we need it. Graham says that being given that particular book in that particular moment had a huge influence on the direction of the rest of his life. Our next story comes from a viewer named Donna Dimali. Donna Dimali? Dimali? I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. She writes that she was on an airplane on a five-hour flight and had a strange feeling that something was wrong. It felt like she was having a stroke. The plane landed in Dallas, Texas, and somehow, she managed to deplane. She still had to catch another connecting flight to Birmingham, Alabama. Donna turned to one of her employees and said, I think I had a stroke on that last flight. So after we get off our next plane, I'm gonna check into a hospital. Suddenly, a man who overheard the conversation told Donna not to get on the plane. He warned her that if she did, she could have another stroke. That man happened to be a doctor, and he called 911 for an ambulance to take her to Las Colinas Medical Center which also happens to be the top stroke center in Irving, Texas, and this very likely saved her life. This is an amazing coincidence, not only because it highlights the importance of listening to your gut and trusting your intuition, it also shows us that more of us should know the signs of someone having a stroke, especially because it's the second highest cause of death worldwide, with heart disease being the highest. So how do we notice the signs? Just remember the acronym FAST, F stands for face, so if you think someone might be having a stroke, ask them to smile. When they do, check to see if one side of their face droops down, and check if they have any trouble seeing out of one or both of their eyes. A stands for arms. Ask the person to raise both their arms and then check to see if one of the arms drifts downwards. Ask if they feel any numbness, especially if it's only on one side of their body. S stands for speech. Ask the person to repeat a simple sentence and then listen to whether they're slurring their words or if they seem confused. T stands for time. If you see any of these signs, call 911 and get them to a hospital right away. Every minute counts because the best treatments for stroke only work if the person makes it to the hospital within three hours of their first symptoms. And even if the person seems okay after a few minutes, it can still be a sign of a serious medical condition so get them to the hospital as soon as you can. 
And now I'd like to share one more comment from a viewer named Mark Warner. He writes that when he was 30 years old, he was falling in love with a woman named Elsie. He remembers one night when they were chatting and sending messages to each other. She said to him, where have you been all my life? He could sense from her words that she was getting emotional. A few seconds later, a song came on, Where Have You Been All My Life by Sunshine Anderson. He was blown away, and he took it as a sign that they were meant to be together. I just love music-related synchronicities, and all of these stories highlight something that, over the years, I've come to feel in my core to be undeniably true. And that is, when you're on the right path, the universe winks and nods at you from time to time, just to let you know. And if we pay attention to them, it nudges us towards the things we're meant to experience at just the moments we need them. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, people who are destined to meet will do so, apparently by chance, at precisely the right moment. And if you want to experience and notice more synchronicities in your life, or if you're wondering what your synchronicities mean, click on this video on the left side of your screen. I would absolutely love it if you pressed the like button and left a comment with a music note emoji. It really helps me out. And I'd love to read more of your stories in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.